We've talked about Apple's headset quite a bit here on this channel, but one thing that we really haven't discussed is XROS, which is what Apple is expected to call its software for the upcoming AR VR headset that should be announced at next week's WWDC. So let's talk about what we can expect, and we'll start briefly with the name. Let me know in the comments if you're feeling it or if you're a fan of XROS, and no, it is not 10ROS, which, Apple, when they released the iPhone XR, the X stood for the Roman numeral 10, but here it actually stands for extended reality, hinting at the augmented and virtual reality functions that's at the heart of the head-mounted device. Now, according to reports by Bloomberg Mark Gurman, Apple sees the headset as a device for gaming, watching, streaming video and video conferencing, uh, health and fitness, and interfacing with other people. Therefore, XROS will be focused on providing the best possible environment for delivering that content. Also to help back this claim up, Apple registered this wordmark with the New Zealand Intellectual Property Office, as you can see here. Now, I was personally a fan of Reality OS, but again, would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. XROS is believed to have an iOS-like interface that will be familiar to iPhone and iPad users, but presented to them and interacted with in an entirely new way. We're expecting a dedicated home screen, which would contain all of the apps and customizable widgets, all of which can be rearranged and all viewed on a dual high-resolution 4K micro LED displays, which uh, have up to 3,000 pixels per inch for a rich, realistic, and immersive viewing experience, which sounds incredible. Both of the user's hands and eyes will be tracked by more than a dozen optical cameras, and the wearer is expected to be able to look at an on-screen item to select it and use a hand gesture, like kind of like a pinch to activate the item on the screen. The XROS software could even potentially project AR app interface elements onto actual objects in the real world, for a mixed reality overlay kind of effect. Apple is also said to be working on an in-air typing feature that is expected to be a bit rudimentary at launch with Apple making notable improvements over time. So just imagine yourself doing this whole thing. Hopefully that works, but uh, we'll see how it goes when the whole thing actually launches. As far as apps go, the core of XROS will be reimagined versions of stock apps like Safari, Photos, Messages, Maps, Apple TV+, FaceTime, and so much more. Users will be able to work within several apps at the same time, while an XROS app store will host made for headset apps as well as existing app store content. Apple is also said to be adapting iPad apps for the headset's 3D interface. So some of the apps and services said to offer radically different experiences in XROS include Apple Fitness Plus, Apple TV Plus with the focus on viewing sports content like MLB and MLS, and a 3D version of Apple's collaborative freeform tool. As for FaceTime, with all of the cameras that the headset is expected to have, one-on-one -on -one chats are said to feature realistic avatars that mimic the user's actual facial expressions and body movements. Now, as far as gaming goes, this is what one would assume would be a very heavy focal point because a lot of AR VR headsets, or VR headsets in particular, are pretty gaming focused. So Apple is said to have been working with a select number of game developers to help them update their existing content for mixed reality. But Apple reportedly also has a robust set of tools available that will allow non-developers to create their own AR VR experiences. According to one report, customers will be able to create and release AR apps for the headset using Siri as an assistant, even if they do not have the ability to code. The report likens Apple's tool to Minecraft and Roblox, which allow anyone to easily create 3D tools and worlds. Apple is said to be utilizing technology that is acquired from Montreal-based startup Fabric Software back in 2017, and customers would be able to distribute the AR apps they create on the App Store alongside developers. Now, all of this was from a report based in 2021, so a lot of time has obviously passed between then, and so it's very possible that Apple has changed its plans, but that was one of the things that was kind of exciting to hear about back then uh, with all of the things that you, know, you could potentially do even as someone who's not a developer 
developer and be able to release your own kind of tools and games. And that would be kind of cool. But of course, we'll find out everything next week. As important as the headset's hardware will be, the software is indeed a crucial aspect that could make or break this entire product for Apple. I'm still trying to figure out what I would be using this headset for on a daily basis and just kind of waiting for Apple to do what it needs to do best, which is explain to me why I need to be using this headset and XROS. But of course, I would want to hear from you in the comments down below. What are you expecting when it comes to XROS and the headset in general? Are you excited? Are you, you know, optimistic? I don't have a whole lot of experience when it comes to AR or VR in general. I've used a MetaQuest before. I had one. Um, I just didn't really use it a whole lot, so I ended up getting rid of it. Uh, and hopefully that's not the case when it comes to Apple. Apple's really good at explaining uh, why I might want one and ultimately convincing me in buying something. And this is an Apple-centric channel, so we'll obviously have one. We'll go hands-on, we'll do all of that. I don't know when it's gonna come out, but I'm excited to see the launch next week at WWDC. So again, let me know in the comments down below what you're excited about and everything surrounding the software and the headset. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.